are the layers at the bottom of a geologic section older than the layers on top? I raise this question because a few young age creationists have recently denied this geologic principle called the principle of superposition, along with many aspects of the three other principles of relative dating. The principle of original horizontality, the principle of lateral continuity, and the principle of cross-cutting relationships. This minority creationist position is based on Walter's law, where sediments of one depositional environment come to lie on top of another, but more specifically, on the work of creationist scientist Guy Berthold. Back in the 80s and 90s, Berthold performed a number of flume experiments that clearly contradicted some of the four principles of relative dating. Berthold demonstrated that when sediment particles of all different shapes and sizes were subject to varying flow conditions, the mixture of sediment particles mechanically sorted themselves out according to size and density. These sorted particles produced horizontal layers just like we see at the Grand Canyon. Importantly, these horizontal layers were not created one atop the other like placing one layer of cake on another. The layers were created from the left to the right as water and sediment flowed downstream. These data are fascinating because it shows, for example, that the law of superposition does not always prove true. Notice that this layer, although on top, is older than this bottom layer which is deposited at a later time. So what should other young earth creationists like you and me make of this truly fascinating research? Was the whole fossil record deposited in a sideways fashion all at once during Noah's flood? I think that the answer is almost certainly no. It is true, Bertholdt's findings are worthy of more research, but there are major hurdles to young earth creationists who want to apply these data to the entire fossil record. Consider dinosaur footprints that in this paper are described from four separate horizons spanning about 600 feet of rock, or these clutches of dinosaur eggs that were also found on four separate horizons. Since these sediments are hundreds of feet thick, and since Bertholdt's hypothesis suggests that all fossil-bearing rocks in any one location were deposited at about the same time, then this would mean that dinosaurs were laying eggs and walking around hundreds of feet underwater while these topmost layers were being deposited. Remember, all of this has to be occurring underwater at about the same time. Now, some might object and state, for example, that this package of strata was deposited at or near the surface in a sideways fashion, as Bertholdt's hypothesis suggests. This would give dinosaurs some time to walk around and lay eggs. Then, at a later time, another package was deposited in the same way over the first package, again giving dinosaurs time to roam around before the third and fourth occurrence. And you know what? I've got absolutely no problem with that hypothesis. In fact, given fluctuating water depths during the flood and multiple week-long stretches of time, when the Earth's surface emerged from the floodwaters, I think something like this actually occurred. But do you see the problem? If that is the case, then we are back to validating the principle of superposition. That is, this layer is older than this one. And problems like this abound for creationists that champion this idea. Bertolt's findings are certainly interesting, and I think young Earth creationists can apply some of his research to creation-based model building. But it would be misleading for young Earth creationists to apply these data to the entire fossil record. The geologic and fossil record is just far too complex to simplistically attribute to any one process, especially one that heavily relies on extremely small-scale flume experiments where the parameters for sediment type, flow direction, and flow velocity have all been set within very narrow limits. A global flood such as that envisioned by young Earth creations must have included an incalculable number of very, very complex processes that simply can't be distilled down to a single process. 
That's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Look, if you thought this video was helpful in any way, then please go ahead and pound that like button, subscribe and ring the bell while you are there. If you feel like giving, well, that would be much appreciated. You'll find a link in the description. And as always, I'm asking for prayer. So if you could spend just a few seconds even and pray for me right now, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. Goodbye.